In Brockton, we swing for the fences so we can touch home. We coach in Brockton to instill the teamwork that builds a great winning tradition. We do business in Brockton because here you can find a taste of home away from home. We keep our company in Brockton because we love this city. When Brockton is home, everything is within reach. Turn it over to my friend and our mayor, Mayor Bill Carpenter. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here with you, and Governor, welcome uh, back to the City of Champions. Uh, I do have just a couple of quick acknowledgments. Uh, we made the decision early on here. If I try to acknowledge every dignitary here, uh, that will exceed the time limit for the program. But I, I do want to particularly welcome the governor and also Secretary Ash. Uh, who are here with us. We've got folks here from Mass Development and Mass Works, and we appreciate uh, their partnership and their commitment to work with us here in Brockton. Uh, members of our state legislative delegation, we've got Senator Brady and Representative Cassidy are both here. And, uh, you know, when, when we see a project like this come to realization, uh, we need the support of the governor and the administration and the secretary uh, to put it in the budget, but we also need our state legislative delegation up on the hill fighting for us every day to make sure it stays in the budget, so thank you. And I know we have members of the City Council, Council Rodriguez, Beauregard, and whoever else I haven't seen, but welcome and thank you uh, for being here. I, I just want to spend a couple minutes to just really share with you how critical this project site that we're standing on is to the future of the downtown. Um, if we're going to identify one project down here as being the catalytic project, this is it because this is going to create over 400 parking spaces in the downtown, critically, critically needed. And I've spent years now studying downtowns of other cities similar to Brockton, manufacturing legacy cities that are revitalizing their downtowns and every single successful turnaround of a downtown I've seen, is that just a little too loud? Let me see that. Every successful turnaround that I've seen has included the construction of at least one parking structure. You've got to build parking up and then develop around it and that's exactly what this is going to give us uh, the opportunity to do here. All you have to do is look over my shoulders to see some of the opportunities right here right at the corner you can't quite see it right around the corner is 19 main street the redevelopment authority is ready to get that property on the market in the next 30 or 60 days that property has already got people coming by to look at it and kick the tires because of what's happening here today because of the promise of parking less than 100 yards away uh, behind me is the long time vacant petronelli building and that parcel will now get redeveloped and then if you look just over here you see several surface parking lots and those cars that you see in that lot right now they'll be coming into this beautiful new garage and those parcels will then be redeveloped for here in the downtown so just within a hundred yards of here you can see half a dozen future developments that will take place because of the construction of this structure and this really will create extra capacity at both ends of the downtown because where we do have the existing Adams garage at the other end of the downtown, some of those cars will come up into this new garage and it'll create additional capacity at the other end of the business district also for exciting plans that we have going on down there. So it really fits into the overall vision that we have for downtown Brockton. Um, and, and Governor, you know, this project also is going to allow us to continue uh, with our plans that really align themselves well uh, with your um, housing choice initiative and with smart growth and and those are at the core of of everything we're doing down here 
You know, the, the rebuilding of downtown Brockton is based upon transit-oriented development. There's the train station right there. Not only can you walk to it, you can see it from here. You get on the train right here, it's exactly 30 minutes to South Station. There is no place less expensive to live in Massachusetts today where you can get to South Station in 30 minutes. And that's creating the opportunity for us for market rate and workforce housing here in the downtown. Bringing people with good jobs and paychecks and disposable income to come choose to live here in downtown Brockton. And I, and I think most importantly, and I know that the Secretary and the Governor want to hear this, is that when the Commonwealth makes this type of investment of public dollars, it only pays off if it leverages private investment to follow behind it. And I can tell you that right now, today, we have 13 projects in the pipeline for downtown Brockton at some stage of permitting, financing, planning, design. 13 projects in the pipeline. So that return on your investment is already coming, Governor. So I'm pretty sure none of you came to hear me speak today. I'm not the headliner today. Uh, but I, I do, uh, it is a great uh, privilege for me to be able to introduce the Governor. Um, Governor, we appreciate the other commitments that you've made here in the downtown, the great working relationship that we have, not just with you, but the Lieutenant Governor, the Secretary, and uh, all the other folks who work for you. Um, folks need to realize, just in these past three and a half years or so, some of the commitments uh, that the Baker Polito administration has made here. Just on the other side of this Trinity building, you see the block of Center Street between W.B. Mason and the Enterprise block here. That was a MassWorks project, over a million dollars to reconstruct that eastern gateway coming into the downtown. There are tens of millions of dollars of investment on both sides of that street. Uh, and, and that was a critical project. Uh, we had the district attorney move into new offices directly across the street from the courthouse and make a long-term commitment to be here. Well, that required a commitment of a couple million dollars in, in a supplemental budget, state budget, to make that happen. And that was another key building block for us in the downtown to have that long-term commitment of not just the district attorney, but the 25 state troopers that work with them to have a long-time commitment to work here in the downtown. And perhaps the largest and most important one that we're looking forward to next year is 226 Main Street, uh, known by many of you as the Ganley Building. And that will be a, a $26 million construction project for a new state office building that's scheduled to break ground later next year. So, Governor, thank you for the other investments you've made. Thank you for the commitment to help us get this parking garage done. And it's uh, my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce to you the Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Charlie Baker. Thank you. So, first of all, good morning, and thank you all for being here. And we are especially excited to be with you all. And but, Mayor, the first thing I have to say is, I've probably been in where the mayor go. I've probably been in front of, uh, I don't know, a thousand podiums of one type or another over the course of the past few years along with a whole bunch of other dignitaries and other people who've been participating in the events of one sort or another. I cannot recall at any time, at any of those events, any speaker who is having trouble with the microphone go. <laughs> is that better? Multitasking. You are a man who can do it all. Um, let me just say, first of all, that the mayor ran through a whole series of uh, my remarks by talking about a lot of the investments and the uh, partnerships that we've established uh, with the city over the course of the past few years under the leadership of uh, the Lieutenant Governor and Jay Ash, who, as many of you know, before he became Secretary of Housing and Economic Development, was the city manager in Chelsea. Um, I had a bunch of people say to me, geez, Jay Ash, Democrat, blah, 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 why did, why, not a business guy, why did you pick him to run your business operation? And the answer was pretty simple. Um, we wanted somebody in that job who 
had real experience working in gateway communities. And over the course of his 15 years in Chelsea as city manager, they did about a billion dollars worth of downtown economic and housing development. And having somebody in that role who could walk the talk with local officials, and especially local officials in gateway communities, was really important to us. And I think a lot of the investments that we've made here have been due to the fact that we have people on our team who understand local government. One of Jay's deputies is Carolyn Kirk, who's the former mayor of Gloucester. Having people like that on our team means they can talk the talk and walk the walk with people when you have conversations about where the best and most significant and highest opportunities are to build momentum and to create opportunity in downtowns. And this project in particular was the result of a whole series of conversations that took place over, I don't know, you guys probably talked for a year, right? Um, and from our point of view, for exactly the reasons the mayor talked about, we felt this was the single biggest opportunity we would have to partner with the city to create a whole series of opportunities around this garage uh, in this downtown and to do it in a way that is completely consistent with our approach to transit-oriented development and our belief that one of the best and most significant things we can do is to bring folks back into many of these downtowns and to do it in a way that works not on top of but in collaboration and cooperation with the folks uh, in that community. And, and Mayor, um, while you talk about it as a as a, as a theoretical opportunity, I can tell you that I was in another gateway community about six weeks ago where somebody was doing a redevelopment project. They were about 25% of the way through it, and it was a big building. It was an old mill building, so they were literally rebuilding and leasing one section at a time, and they had rebuilt several sections of this building. It was 85% rented, market rate and workforce, and almost everybody in that building, the developer told me, was living in that building at a dramatically lower price than they would pay to be in a place like Boston. Many of them worked somewhere in the downtown Boston, Cambridge area, and they were hopping on the train, which was right across the street, which in that case as well, we'd done a mass works project to deal with some of the issues around the street, infrastructure and all the rest. And he was quite sure that over time he would be able to build out the whole building and lease the whole thing out. And, uh, and that is exactly the kind of strategy and approach that I think we are taking in a number of places around Massachusetts. And we are starting to see some of the fruits of that. Um, obviously, there's much more to be done. But for us, uh, this whole notion of establishing partnerships and relationships with our colleagues in local government finding places and opportunities where they and we can leverage each other's assets and resources to make good things happen is exactly what we believe we're supposed to be about as an administration. We think this project has tremendous potential for this community. We're excited to be here to break ground on it, but what we're really excited about is all of the activity that it's going to generate um, because it's coming and once it's here. And, uh, and as I said, it fits perfectly with a lot of the things we're trying to do as an administration especially with, with respect to the strategies we think work best in gateway communities. So this is a great day for Brockton, it's a great day for the Commonwealth, and we look forward to seeing uh, this project uh, deliver on all of the opportunity that we believe is attached to it. And congratulations to the delegation, the City Council, and the Mayor for all of your hard work and your creativity, and we look forward to working with the folks at the BRA to make this happen. Thank you very much. We're the largest privately held office supplier in the country right now, and it's coming out of Brockton, Massachusetts. Kenworth has had a good experience in Brockton. The big selling point for Kenworth going to Brockton was easy highway access and a city that would be easy to work with to get a nicely renovated facility up and running quickly. This is home. We love where we're at right now. And why would anybody not want to come to Brockton and go out there and try to shoot for the same kind of dreams with their company? Business investments are helping to build a new Brockton. Well, uh, good afternoon and welcome to everybody. This is certainly a uh, very exciting afternoon here at, I don't know which title to use yet, if it's 
pay with mass hire. I don't want to make that announcement yet. Um, but wherever it is that we're at, we're happy to have you all here. Um, the, uh, we're looking very much forward to the event upstairs, the open house, the announcements upstairs. Uh, but the Lieutenant Governor also has an additional announcement to make today uh, regarding a major investment uh, by the state that's going to facilitate uh, a large project right here in the heart of the downtown. So uh, would you please welcome the Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Karen Peter. to talk about that announcement. Just to, just to congratulate uh, Brockton, congratulate the leadership here. Uh, mayor sets the tone and everyone just working together collaboratively uh, to, to showcase what's happening here in Brockton. I am so happy to follow, uh, follow the heels of the governor being here just a short time ago, uh, talking about the, the garage and those investments. Uh, we sit in what's called a, a TDI. There's a, this is a transformative development area of the Commonwealth, and we are literally seeing it transform uh, before our eyes. Uh, I was also happy to know that this is an opportunity zone, uh, taking advantage of federal resources that could become available and private investment in this neighborhood that will continue to allow you to fulfill the, the vision that you have set uh, for downtown Brockton. Uh, Today is an important announcement because it falls uh, squarely uh, within the vision that you have set and the vision that our secretary, Jay Ash, and our economic development team has set for downtown uh, cities like, downtowns in cities like uh, Brockton, in a gateway city. When we think of economic development, it really starts with populating downtowns and main streets with more people. Not only more people who are here during the day to go to work uh, and then may go someplace else at night uh, where they live, but that live here, that stay here, and that go to bed at night here and wake up here in the morning in your downtown. Why do we feel that's so important? It's important because these are individuals and families who need services, who want restaurants, who want culture and entertainment and things to do. Uh, they may get on the train, which is so close by because this is a transit-oriented development area and be able to get to work. Or uh, those that might work in uh, or live in other areas want to come here to Brockton for things that you offer here. So having housing in the downtown is critically important to helping you achieve more economic opportunity. And that's why today when you're looking at this rendering of 121 Main Street, which we all know where that is, uh, is there a Prova? Yeah. Is there? Yeah. I've been keeping an eye on it. You've been having a lot of fun there, I think. I've been following you on Twitter. And you're there a lot, so mostly I'm not playing. But before Guilty. Prova, before Prova, I was standing there with you and making a Brownfields announcement, mm -hmm. a, a small amount of money, seed money, that we awarded uh, to you uh, to do the assessment of the building and then determine uh, what could follow next, which is the reason why I'm here to congratulate NeighborWorks and the city uh, for a $22 million uh, housing uh, that will be constructed in 121 Main Street. 48 units of housing mixed between affordable and market rate uh, workforce housing and uh, an over $15 million commitment from the state uh, in tax credits and grants to help uh, partner with the developer to make more housing available uh, to people. <laughs> but also for your resourcefulness. Uh, the mayor and his team uh, are, are very adept at finding the right partners to work with and also taking advantage of the grant opportunities and tax credit programs that are available at the state level and cobbling all that together to make stuff happen. Uh, there's no question you need uh, people uh, who wake up every day in this community and are the driving force behind uh, this kind of agenda, and you've got a great mayor and colleagues in your legislative delegation 
who wake up in this city, think about it, plan for it, go to bat for it every single day. And it's a, it's a great uh, honor for the governor, uh, Charlie, and I to, and our team to be able to partner with all of you. Finally, I just want to say that that's an incredible asset that this state has. I kind of feel like we live in our own uh, bubble here because we have this collaborative style of governing and working together across political lines to get things done, working state and local government and our private sector working together. And if we just keep rolling up our sleeves and focusing on our work, gee, look, look what good things can come of that. Uh, you're doing a great job here in Brockton. Really happy to be here to make this announcement today. And I look forward to our next visit. Maybe, um, maybe right after November 6th I can join you and probably will still be open. <laughs> We have a lot of partners in this room with us, and uh, these types of projects require us all getting behind it. And uh, Rob Corley will be up in a moment from NeighborWorks. I want to recognize Rob May, our Director of Planning and Economic Development. He, uh, working as the TDI district, our first grant we received from TDI funded uh, our downtown action strategy. And what you see in this project, that could be the poster project for all of the programs <clears throat> and all of the things we're trying to do downtown. It's mixed use. We're still revitalizing the business district on the ground floor. We're rebuilding a vital business district in the heart of the downtown. And this will be two or three commercial retail spaces on the ground floor. And the plans call for one of those spaces to be a restaurant know how hard we're all working to bring restaurants into the downtown and it's going to be a lot easier to convince a restaurant to occupy that space when there's 48 residents who also live right in the building with them and they see these other developments popping up around the downtown and I think one thing Prava showed us this summer is that there is a market for restaurants and a nightlife in downtown Brockton if you give people a reason to come out, they will come out. Right. And projects like this <laughs> So this just hits a lot of real key chords for us. It's transit-oriented development, which is at the foundation of our vision for the downtown. It's walking distance to the commuter rail station, a commuter rail station that connects to our local Brockton area transit, a commuter rail station that where the train ride is exactly 30 minutes to South Station. And with this type of housing here, we will really build a market of being the most affordable place to live that you can get into downtown Boston in a 30 minute commute. And that's what we have to market in downtown. That's what this project represents. It also represents re uh, re uh, reoccupying, reigniting, um, reactivating a vacant space. Prava has been a lot of fun this summer, uh, but it is a vacant space in the heart of the downtown. It was the former Kresge's. It was a long-term vacant building that we finally had to tear down two or three years ago. Um, and Prava has been exciting this summer, but what's even more exciting is the, the prospect, the vision of this project beginning construction on that site right in the heart of the downtown. And the final thing I'll just mention, because there is a tremendous amount of state aid in this project, but the city also has some money in this too. So we committed $450,000 of our home funds towards the cost of the project. And I guess a half a million doesn't sound like a lot when it's a $22 million project, but that actually represents more than one year's worth of home funds to the city. That's actually a little more than the total we receive in a year. So our commitment actually had to be split into two years to make that kind of a commitment to the project. And I know the half a million is important, uh, but I think it was even more important that it symbolized that when DHCD and state agencies are looking at viability of projects, they want to see the local community put a little skin in the game themselves. If we believe in the project, we've got to put some of our own money in it too. And we don't have quite as much money as the state government does. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but you brought your checkbook, right? Um, 
but the fact of the matter is that we did commit almost half a million dollars of funds as a grant towards the cost of this project. So uh, we, we do have some skin in the game. We're looking forward to the project. This is a mosaic that's coming together piece by piece, and what we're really building here is a livable, walkable downtown. And, and that's what we're really excited about, and that's what this project will contribute to. Um, the Lieutenant Governor alluded to it, but it's great to tout all the state funding for the project. A project like this does not happen without our state legislative delegation. And uh, Senator Brady, Mike, and Jerry, and Claire, um, we work extremely well together. It's not that complicated. We've got to convince the governor to put it in the budget, and then we need our legislative team up on Beacon Hill shepherding it through and making sure that it, that it survives and it gets into the final budget. And I know that they worked incredibly hard up on the Hill to make sure uh, that the funding for this project would be there. So I, I appreciate everything uh, that you guys are doing for us up on the Hill. And we're under a little bit of time constraint, but we're going to have a Representative Cassidy come up and uh, make some remarks on behalf of the entire delegation. Uh, Representative Jerry Cassidy. I'll be very brief, but uh, I do. I know the uh, the governor was here uh, uh, last week, and uh, that was very nice. But I have a special bond with the lieutenant governor because March uh, 9th, uh, uh, 2016, she swore me in as state representative. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, I also just want to, uh, uh, a few months ago, Tim Doherty from NeighborWorks, uh, we sat down over here at Elvira, and uh, they wanted to get things rolling about uh, uh, this 121 Main Street. So I called my good friend Jay Ash, uh, Secretary Ash is without a doubt one of the nicest people. Yeah, I've known him for 30 years, and uh, he said, well, we'll see what we can do. And Senator Brady and I you know, made contact with him, and uh, he uh, got the ball rolling, and it's very good to have uh, Secretary Ash. And, uh, Representative Cronin and uh, Representative DeBar was not here. But I do remember when this was Kresge's, and uh, uh, now that we have Prova, which means proof, proof this can happen, that downtown Brockton is one of those places that uh, is really on the mend with the trains. And I just want to thank the uh, Polito and uh, Baker uh, administration. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, the, this project is being developed by NeighborWorks. We've had a great working relationship with, with NeighborWorks since we arrived here almost five years ago. And uh, this is just the, the latest project that we've had the ability to work on together. Uh, so to fill you in a little bit more on the details of the project, I'd like to invite up Rob Corley. Thank you, Rob. Um, very excited to be here today. We've been working on this project for a very, very long time. I will say, Lieutenant Governor, I do follow you on Twitter, and you get along <laughs> around everywhere. It's unbelievable. Um, so I want to thank you very, very much. And on behalf of our board of directors, we've been working, again, on this project and things just like this in Brockton for over 10 years um, with great support from our staff, with Sydney Frendergast and Joe Medallo and many that are here that have been working tirelessly in Brockton, right here in downtown, trying to make things happen. Um, I'm honored to just be part of it. Uh, to be a part of such an exciting project that uh, Tim Doherty, our real estate development director, put his heart and soul into. Um, it's a, a LIHTC project, um, it's workforce housing, it's got pretty much every source that we could possibly get into it. The mayor is right, the commitment of home funds that are here in the city to allocate two years worth of that, or essentially 100% of what they have available uh, to this project is amazing and sort of unprecedented. Um, and, and Rob May, uh, his vision with the mayor, we sat down at, at, in the mayor's office at his big table there, and uh, we started talking about different sites in downtown Brockton, and this was the one that came up. Uh, we worked very hard to get it to where it is today, and um, I'm just so honored to be part of this, and uh, thank you all for your support. I really appreciate it. So, this is actually just the warm-up to a much bigger event upstairs uh, that uh, we're really looking forward to. I, I want to thank uh, Sheila sullivan Jardin for being such a gracious uh, host and allowing us to use this space for this announcement here today. And we want everybody to join us upstairs for the uh, official launch of Mass Hire and the open house. 
and it really is truly an exciting event uh, upstairs. So please, thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, and uh, come on upstairs and join us upstairs, please. Thank you.